Hey everybody, how's it going? I was on one of the uh, railroad Facebook pages and uh, I don't recall which one it was, but uh, someone uh, asked a question about all this stuff on the side of cars and what it means. So I figured, hey, what the heck? I don't have anything going this morning, so let's go out here. It's, uh, I'm in the Bakersfield yard, Union Pacific here. Uh, there's no switching going on on this part of the yard. Uh, everything's just kind of sitting here and it's quiet and it's a nice, uh, very nice day. It's getting really cool again. So I thought I will come down here to the yard and go over some of this stuff, at least all of it that I know what means. All right, let's check it out. All right, well, this is a relatively new gondola car. And uh, you see up there. CHTT 214463, you see the same information right there. CHTT is the owner of the car. Uh, I did Google it a little, but I just saw some other types of CHTT cars. So uh, those were coil steel cars, but uh, this is not a coil steel car. Um, right here. Lift and jack here. This is for the car department when they need to jack these cars up off the trucks to do any type of work on them. That is the jack point for this end of the car. And that is the car number. This is the uh, load limit on top. Loaded. The max weight of this car is 207,900 pounds. Its weight empty is 78,000 100 pounds and 3,564 cubic feet of space inside this car. And you have the reflective stripes, help people see these cars because they are black. So at night, maybe at an unprotected crossing, maybe at a protected crossing, these are very reflective. And right here, this is the, uh, I don't know exactly what these are called, the puck that has the uh, chipped information inside the, is inside this, and when they go by the automatic equipment identification sites, the AEI sites, that is what is scanned. You can put, uh, they can paint over this or whatever, it won't make any difference, the scanner will still pick it up. I will link in the description below the video I did about how the AEI sites work. And uh, you can see here, this car was built in May, of 2022 so it hasn't been shopped yet it hasn't it hasn't needed a regular inspection yet it's as i said a relatively new car looks like this is uh in uh this car was built in mexico all right this uh boss car here let's check it out tofx those may be lease companies. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I don't know exactly what all this signifies. Uh, most rail cars are not owned by railroads. They're owned by leasing companies. But uh, I shouldn't say most, a lot. But anyway, 887156 is the car number. The load limit for this car is 211,600 pounds. It's lightweight is 74,400 pounds. Uh, it's an excess height car at 16 feet, 11 inches. Uh, excess width, 10 feet, 8 inches. Oh, look, F35. They do touch and goes here in Bakersfield sometimes at Meadows Field. But IL, I believe, is internal length, 50 feet 6 inches, internal width 9 feet 6 inches, internal height 12 feet 11 inches, and 6,228 cubic feet of interior space. Yeah, I don't know what empty CG or floor H, uh, 411 and 38, I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Plate F, I am not sure what that is. Please, uh, if you know, drop in the comments below. Here it tells you two inch tread 
C-O-N-D. I don't know if that's conditioned, conduct, I don't know what that is. Shoes, but I'm assuming that is the type of brake shoe that this car has. Some information on the door here. Security device only. Uh, that is how they lock these doors if they need to. The opening is 12 feet wide and 12 feet 4 inches high. Close and lock doors before moving car. Hello, Jet. Door loop 622. Uh, I don't know what AIXJX is. I don't know if that is a lubric that they've lubricated the door slides. I don't know. If you do, let me know. One of the things that I've noticed lately that these uh, people that did this, these graffiti people, is that they didn't block out the uh, information. This is the exterior, Williams Hayward. Oh, that I would assume that is the color and type of paint and the company that made it. In the interior, uh, same information. Hempel 45883 white. And some numbers I can't make out. Go back here to the other end of this car and I'll show you what I'm talking about for the graffiti people. You can see here that when these uh, graffiti artists, and I do consider them artists, I know a lot of purists hate graffiti, and but it's part of the modern way things are. It doesn't hamper operations of either the switcher or the, the, the shipper or the receiver or the railroad and these people have begun blocking these information pieces out that way they're not they aren't hampering operations because if they did block that out and they needed to know something it might slow things down at the shops all right you see that this car was built in May of 1996, it has no uh, shop dates on it, so obviously nothing's ever gone wrong with it. Jacking point. Oh, so you can actually read this one. Railroad Friction Products Corporation. Okay, that's what I couldn't see at the other end, or in the other car. And then there is the Transcore High Temp Tag that is scanned by the AEI sites. And this is just another box car. But you can see it was built in January of 1980 and it has no shop dates on it. That doesn't mean it's never been shopped, I guess. It just They just didn't put the dates on. This car was cleaned. It's not dated, but it says it was cleaned at uh, Kenny, Texas. You can see here that the uh, AEI uh, puck has been painted over. As I said before, that won't affect anything. 2-inch HF comp shoes. Uh, again, the type of brake shoe that this car is using. And here you can see that this was a Missouri Pacific gondola originally. Number five, 65206. You can see the limits on this one. 191,000 and 72,000. And at the other end of this car is the Union Pacific emblem since uh, Missouri Pacific no longer exists and you can see that this car was built in March of 1976 and rebuilt in September of 1996 we are at one of the uh, dreaded center beam lumber cars and they do use center beam cars for other things but generally they are for lumber but uh, let's take a look at this car uh, this actually has a lifting point as well as a jack point and a pull point uh, they can uh, hook these cars up and pull them around I guess I know that uh, some industries have uh, uh, oh we call them cat heads in the oil field a steel wheel that rotates and you know, wrap a rope around it and get a lot of pulling power there's the type of uh, brake shoes this has two inch tread condition and I also went down and spoke to 
Uh, I don't know if he is an MRO or an M MOP or MT. I'm not sure exactly what his title is. Had a job briefing with he and the uh, crew on the SJVR, and they will not be switching this track out for a while. So they said, I have plenty of time to come back here and do this. And they'll give me a toot if they're going to start hooking up. Anyway, TTZX, that's uh, the leasing company. I'm almost positive. These are very common. Uh, there is the car number, load limits, and you'll see it really doesn't make much difference what kind of cars these are. They all have similar load limits. I know that there are uh, specialized cars that are different, but most of these are, with, are in pretty much the same limits. Built by Trinity Interest Industries, Greenville, Pennsylvania, a defect card i guess that's where you would put if there was something wrong with this car and they had to set it out they would put a card in that little uh tube there it's hollow and that would tell whoever when they took it to a shop that would tell them what was wrong with it ownership subject to a uh, security filed with the interstate commerce commission so whoever owns that car the ICC knows who it is. For restricted loading only, see equipment register. Interior length, 73 feet, 0 inches. Interior height, 11 feet, 5 inches. That's the height of the bulkhead. And I assume the center beam. There's a gondola for all you SP heads. I saw when I walked by the other end of it down there where the UP emblem is. This car was built. In uh, July of 1974, minor TCC IV 80 LT applied July of 08. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like some kind, possibly an upgrade of some sort or a repair of some sort. This is a specialized tank car. This one is an acid car. RCRX, there is the Lister and the car number. And as you can see, they're all similar in loaded and lightweight. There are the instructions. Do not make acid connection before venting to release pressure. Avoid flames. After loading or unloading, wash exterior of tank and dome with water to remove spillage. Do not clean with a caustic soda. Consult owner before repairing tank. Sharp objects must not contact lining. This Hobo Oliver with a combo meal there and his homage to the East Palestine derailment. Vent tank when unloading. Conductivity tested at each loading. See shipping record and there are the emergency numbers. For Canada, Mexico, and the United States, this car is hauling hydrochloric acid. Gives you the paint type there. And I guess I guess that matters if they're repainting the car, maybe. Or in the event of an emergency, I don't know. Maybe certain paints have certain properties that they need to know about. This car was built in July of 2014. And there are the testing. These uh, cars like this have much more rigorous testing requirements and inspection requirements. And it tells you the station, it tells you what the test was, where it was performed, when it was uh, qualified for that test, certified or whatever, and when the next test is due. 1789, that is the acid placard. And a rubber line tank applied in August of 2014. All right, these are both the same kind of car. Uh, neither are placards, so that means that they're either empty or hauling some sort of uh, non flammable or non hazardous material, CTCX. Again, you can see that the max and light weights are similar to other cars. Plate C. I don't know if that's the thickness of the steel that these cars are made out of or not. Close and lock bottom outlet after unloading. And there is 
the unloading valve. And there are the handles. On using the valve, four inch fiberglass insulation, do not exceed 450 degrees. Vent tank when unloading, maximum operating pressure for heater coils, 150 PSI exterior heater pipes, no inlet or outlet pipe cars, pipe caps required. Now, a lot of times they will ship heavier uh, oil products, petroleum products in these cars, and they keep them heated to keep the, uh, the product uh, where it will flow easily when they unload it. And again, these have more stringent uh, inspection, testing, and quali qualification guidelines than uh, your average boss car or flat car. This is a liquefied petroleum gas car, UTLX 954732. The tank car people, it's non odorized. Liquefied petroleum gas built February of 08. Now, this car, this gondola here is another CHTT car, but it has a little more information than the uh, first car I showed. Uh, the springs, 77 OCD5. I don't know what those numbers mean, but I'm assuming those are the springs there. If I'm wrong about that, please drop in the comments below. 36 inch wheels with number 24 brake beams. All right, well, this is a different kind of car. I'm sure I've seen these before, but uh, I'm not sure what this is for, uh, what it's designed to carry. If you know, let me know in the comments below. It's got the spring information, wheel, Wabco, which is Westinghouse Air Brake Company, draft gear. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what kind of car this is. It does have a, a little bit higher load limit, max load limit than the other cars we've looked at, but not much. It's still in the same uh, ballpark. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this uh, car's got these struts here. If that's what they're called, the strength in the sides and middle. Uh, you have to contact car owner to any weld before any weld repair. Two inch HF. The uh, the Union Pacific guy just came by, asked him all ago what what that meant. He couldn't remember, and uh, we sat there and talked about how hard it is to remember all the stuff that we have going on that we try to remember. And uh, he come driving up and said it stands for high friction. So there you go. All right, well, I figured since we're already here and there's a nice new, relatively new, relatively clean locomotive here, get some of the uh, stuff that it has. It has the information for the air, and uh, I don't know which is which. I don't know which is green and which is yellow, but... Uh, I'm sure some of you do. I know that some of the uh, older locomotives, or other locomotives that I've seen, actually have, uh, they're actually labeled. GE Remote Monitoring and Diagnostic Services. They have information on them, but not like the cars do. But as you can see, Model ES 44AC, 4400 horsepower. Has the serial number, was built in February 2006, so this is not a new locomotive, it's just a redone locomotive. Weight, 416,000 pounds. Uh, these things are extremely heavy. Your car is like, this hitting your car is like your car hitting an aluminum can. Brake cylinder cutout cockpit, uh, pet cock, rail cleaning cutout, high voltage, Whew. lots of high voltage in these. Here's where the uh, fill cap for the fuel is. And we complain, or I should say, I complained about having to fill up my 36 gallon tank. Emergency fuel shut off, air tanks.
I'm not sure what those are, but I'm sure some of you know. Talk about the sanders. To a lot of people at the museum, we talk about uh, using sand for traction. You can see that hose sit sticking out right in front of the wheel. That is where the sand comes up. They have them in front of that wheel and in front of the, the uh, following wheel over here. Ownership subject to a security agreement filed with the Service Transportation Board, similar to uh, what they do with the cars. And your basic watch your step signs. Yeah, not a lot of information on these cars. They're not, they don't have as many numbers on them as uh, a lot of uh, uh, information the cars have. Now, these are, uh, I don't know if these are older. They're certainly dirtier. And obviously a different kind. I don't know what type of locomotive that was that we just looked at. A little watering for if they need water for some reason around here. Toilet drain and this is this is is the other side of the locomotive. C45 A C C T E. So this one does have a few other things. Lube oil drain. There is the uh puck for the automatic equipment identification measure number two wheel for event recorder wheel measurement 43 inch wheels new a 38 inch witness groove I don't know what that is but I'll bet some of you do brake pipe cut out and another C45 a C C T E I don't know what the F signifies. As you can see on this one, uh, these are actually labeled. I'm not sure what MR, ACT, and ANR mean, but I know some of you do. This is where you plug in the uh, the uh, cables that uh, will lash these together. Not sure what that is. Maybe for a dummy end, I don't know what that is. Uh, battery charging receptacle. All right, that's for charging the batteries. Now I know. Seventy-four volt bulb. No wonder they're so bright. Looks like that just about covers the locomotive. I'm sure there are other locomotive types that have other or more information. Well, oh, here's an information sheet for these. And this one is actually newer than the clean one. This one is built in July 2012, but it weighs the same and has the same horsepower rating. All right, well, that will conclude my piece on what the information on the side of these cars mean. There are some hopper cars over there. I got pretty much every type of car that's in the Bakersfield yard right now, but uh, they are switching the tracks currently where the hopper cars are, so I'm going to stay away from there. It doesn't matter. It's all pretty much the same information. And as you saw, these cars are all done pretty similarly. Their max and light weights are similar. Uh, the type of brakes and wheels and all that that they use, springs, all that stuff is, is very similar. They're just used for different purposes. All right, well, here are the URLs for my PayPal and my Patreon. And if you can help out the channel that way, I'd sure appreciate it. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorport 59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and we will see you all later.